Hello everyone, I hope you are all having a great day today. So today class, we will be tackling about the differences between non-experimental and experimental research design. Let's first talk about non-experimental research. First, researchers in non-experimental research collect data without intervening or introducing treatments to our subjects. Researchers can only observe the behaviors of their subjects in their own natural setting without manipulating any independent variables. They will just simply measure variables as they naturally occur. We use non-experimental approach if experiments aren't possible, practical, or ethical. So guys, dito sa non-experimental, wala kayong gagawin na manipulation sa variables nyo. Observer lang ang role nyo dito. And magtanong-tanong. Usually, ang gagawin nyo lang ay mag-interview, observe, gather na information or data, and mag-give ng mga surveys or questionnaires. Now, there are five common non-experimental approaches used by psychologists, and these are the following. First, we have phenomenon, case study, field studies, archival studies, and lastly, qualitative studies. Okay, let's talk about phenomenology. So, it involves trying to understand the essence of a phenomenon by examining the views of people who have experienced that phenomenon. Okay, so let me give you an example. A psychologist is interested in studying the phenomenon of near-death experience. So, hahanap si psychologist ng mga tao na nakaranas na nito. And usually, the psychologist will use in-depth interviews to know what their subjects experience in this kind of phenomenon. Maybe some of the subjects will say that they saw heaven and hell. Some may even say that they even saw God, Buddha, Allah, aliens, and so on. After the interview is done, the psychologist will look at all the answers of their subjects and will try to look at a pattern. Maybe those people who saw hell, heaven, and God may have the same religion such as Christianity. And maybe those people naman who saw Buddha, they may have a religion of Buddhists. So the researcher may conclude that whatever you will see on your near-death experience will be based on your religion. But class, this is just an example, okay? This is not a fact, but I hope you get the point. By the way, class, you can also cover any phenomenon that you like. It can be from rare situations like self-claimed alien abductee or a person with dissociative identity disorder to something that is completely ordinary like these Lister students or students who are experiencing anxiety in schools. Next, we have case study. It is basically used to study individuals, and it is a descriptive record made by an observer of an individual's experiences, behaviors, or both. Let me give you an example of a famous case study in psychology. This is the case study of the wild boy of Aveyron. In the late 1700s, residents near a wooded area in France spotted a child roaming alone. It was believed that he may be abandoned by his parents in the woods or he might have lost his way when he was still a toddler. In the 1800s, he came out of the woods for good and the residents nearby took care of him. The child couldn't speak and ayaw rin niya magsuot ng damit and lagi rin siyang nananakbo for hours. He actually behaved like an animal. That's why people believe that he had been raised by animals. He also ate raw, dirty, and even foul meat. He also urinate and defecate on himself without care at all. So a lot of experts helped to educate him, and even one position gave him the name Victor. However, all their programs were met with mixed success. Victor never really learned to speak or write fluently, but he learned how to dress, learned civil toilet habits, could write a few letters, and acquired some very basic language comprehension. Therefore, Victor wasn't able to tell his whole life story to others. So whatever happened before he was taken care of is still a mystery. It was also stated in his case study that he probably suffered irreversible functional brain damage from the isolation that he experienced. That's why hanggang siya ay namatay, he never really mastered communicating with people. However, no matter how wild he become, he responded immediately to treatment and regained a kind of partial humanity.
So guys, remember that case study allows us to study a rare phenomenon like the case of Victor. And the case study is also commonly conducted in clinical settings. Ginagawa ng case study ang mga patients to have in-depth understanding on their situation and for psychologists to know the best therapy technique for the patient. Next, we have field studies. Field studies are non-experimental approaches used in the field or in real-life settings. Participants or subjects get to be free and behave like their true selves, and they may also be unaware that they are in the experiment. The important thing that we need to know in field studies is that we don't have a controlled environment. Hindi natin kaya i-manipulate ang surroundings ng subject natin. Hahayaan lang natin sila sa natural habitat nila. Field studies is directly linked to real world. Social scientists and psychologists often use field experiments to perform blind studies, where their subjects are not even aware that they are already in an experiment. There are two types of field studies. Okay, so we have naturalistic observation studies and participant observer studies. So let's first tackle naturalistic observation studies. This technique involves studying the spontaneous behavior of participants in natural surroundings. The researcher simply records what they see in whatever way they can. Just imagine in class, we are studying wild animals. If controlled ang experiment natin, these animals will be in a zoo. And if naturalistic naman, they will be in their natural habitat. Now, let's apply that to psychology. A psychology wanted to know if teachers give equal amount of attention to their male and female students. So, nag-observe ang psychologist sa isang classroom with permission to the teacher, but the teacher didn't know that she is the one being observed. So what they found out is that most of the teachers gave more attention to girls than boys. We can see that walang ginawang intervention sa kanila ang psychologists. They only observed their subject's behavior in their natural setting, which is inside the classroom. Next, we have participant observer studies. In this kind of field study, the researcher actually becomes a part of the group being studied to get a deeper insight into their lives. Participant observations can also be either covert or overt. Kapag covert, the researcher will be undercover and they will hide their real identity and hindi rin nila sasabihin kung ano yung purpose ng study nila for them to gain deeper insight to their study.